Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and today I want to show you um, how to load your fonts inside your CSS in a way that will make your life as a web developer a lot easier. Um, so with this method, it's only going to apply when you're loading your fonts directly from your web server. So if you're using um, Google Fonts, this method does not apply. And what this does is it actually allows you to use the font weight and the font style CSS rules in a way that they're designed for. Okay, so um, I've actually downloaded um, a font called Overpass and we're going to actually include that font in this correct manner um, to this HTML document. Alright, so um, inside the source code for this document, it looks like this. Okay, let's hop inside here index.html. So we have the um, the paragraph tag with a class of text. Okay, I've also included a new um, fonts CSS file inside the CSS directory and it looks like this. It's an empty CSS file. We're going to do all of the importing inside this separate CSS file. Alright, I've also got a directory called fonts which contains all the overpass font files. So I've got four styles here. I've got I've got regular, italic, um, bold, and also bold italic. And I've got the WAF and the WAF2 version of both of these fonts. So um, just keep in mind that um, WAF and WAF2 are now in 2018 um, should be enough to be compatible across all or most web browsers. Okay. So, we're going to import all of these eight font files, so it's going to be four font styles, inside this HTML document. Alright, so, um, let's head inside the fonts CSS file and begin by importing the overpass regular version. Alright, so, we're going to use the at font face rule, and this allows you to import a font. Alright, inside here, we can now specify the source of the two font files, um, the WAF and the WAF2 version. Okay, so we'll say src, put a colon, and then use the URL. Okay, inside here we can now specify the path to the WAF file. So we'll go up a directory, we'll say fonts, and then overpass regular dot WAF. Okay, putting a space and then saying format WAF tells the browser the format of this font file. So that is now the WAF version um, loaded. We can put a comma and then load the WAF2 version. All right, go down here. We can copy and paste this line. All right, copy and paste that and put WAF2 and then WAF2. Put a semicolon and that's it. So now we have actually um, told the browser where to find um, the two WAF and the WAF2 files for this overpass regular font. Okay, um, we can now specify the name of this font, um, the name of the font family. All right, so down here we can say font family, okay, as being um, overpass. So now the browser knows when you see. Um, font family overpass inside your CSS code we're going to use um, one of these two fonts and the browser will decide which one of these it wants to use alright cool so now um, to do this properly we have to specify um, two more rules okay a font style rule that'll be normal okay and a font weight rule once again, normal. Right? So, what these two lines do is it actually tells the browser uh, when you encounter a font family of overpass, a font style of normal, and a font weight of normal, then use that font right there because this font file is the overpass regular style. There's no bold or italic or bold italic, it's simply just the regular one, which means. Um, it makes sense to say we're going to filter this and say um, a font style of normal as opposed to like you know italic 
and a font weight of normal as well, as opposed to bold or, or um, you know, light. All right. So now we have these, I guess, filter options specified inside the font face property. All right. So now this font is loaded um, fully. Okay. So I can now save this file and go inside the HTML file and then add a style for the class of text. So inside here, I'm going to say dot text. Okay. Inside here, I'm going to say font family overpass and then a backup as sans serif. Okay. So I can now save this and refresh the browser and we get the font loaded up um, on the screen. So we can see it worked, but I didn't actually specify the font style and the font weight rule. Okay, that's because by default, um, the font style is normal and the font weight is normal as well. So that's so that right there is the default for all of your CSS. Okay, or in most cases. All right, so I can further prove this by going inside the Chrome Developer Tools. We can check out the paragraph tag, go inside the computed style section. We're going to tick this show all box, all right, and scroll down to the font um, section. All right, cool. So we see font family of overpass, a font style as normal by default, and a font weight of 400, which means normal by default. Okay. So 400 is um, the equivalent of being normal um, in font weight terms. So we have all these three um, options uh, matched against our font face rule. So we're going to use this regular font. Okay. So what if I was to say font family overpass and then font weight of being bold. Okay. We haven't got the bold font loaded inside this file. So um, if I was to save this and refresh the browser, we actually get a bold version of the font. But this is actually um, fake bold. This bolded um, version is created by Chrome. Okay, This is not the official font from the actual file. This is fake bold. So, if I was to hop inside something like Firefox, okay, a different browser, and then refresh this one, we can see that bold, okay, is different to the Chrome bold. All right, it looks a lot different. That's because these two web browsers have a different way of actually rendering um, a fake bold. All right, so to actually load the real bold, we can essentially do the same thing. So. Inside the font CSS file, let's just copy this entire code, okay? Copy this and paste it down here. This time, we're going to change the font weight to bold and um, the actual font source files to overpass bold.wav. All right? So now we're saying to the browser, when you encounter overpass, with a font style of normal and a font weight of bold, we're going to use that font. So I can save this and refresh Chrome and watch this space right here. If I refresh, we get a different version. And that right there is the actual bold um, that comes with um, the file. Okay, so inside Firefox, if we compare these two now, refresh this one, we can see we get consistent results across both browsers. So they're both using the actual font file. So once again, inside the actual computed version of the styles, um, inside the font section, font family of overpass, a font style of normal and a font weight of 700, which means um, bold in font weight terms. So we're specifying these three parameters and we're matching it inside the font face rule and that's how the browser knows to actually select the correct bold file all right we can do the same thing for the um, italic and the bold italic version 
let's just once again copy this and paste it down here and we can say um, italic okay and then we're gonna say font weight of normal okay font style of bold sorry font style of italic all right let's copy this and paste it down here this time we're going to use the bold italic version of that font font style of italic and font weight of bold so now we have um, these these two changed okay so I can save this and refresh the browser and then I'm going to edit the actual um, CSS properties inside the styles window so for this paragraph tag let's make the um, the font weight of being normal all right and the font style of being italic so now we have the italic version of the actual font file okay if I was to make this font white as being bold once again we get the bold version of this font okay so just to recap um, this font face rule is basically specifying parameters or um, you know filters to match so the browser is going to see these three rules and if if the actual style matches those rules then use that font file up there okay so that is how you can load fonts correctly or in a way that will make your life a lot easier um, inside CSS thank you for watching and I'll see you later